Yo, what is up people? Welcome back to the channel. Jack from JRC. Big up yourselves. Big up everybody for coming back. Also, big up you if you're new. Check out that little subscribe button down there. Click that. Press the bell, notified, so you don't miss any future uploads. Press that like button, leave a little comment, let us know what you think at the end of the video. Or midway, if there's any questions you have, anything like that. Drop it in the comments, I do respond to all the comments if I can. Unless it's really, really, really negative, then I'll just like it. So if you don't get responded to, that's because you're an idiot. No, I'm joking, I do respond to everything to be fair. So in today's video, we will be running through a fuse board, which is a new install, a rewire that we've done on previous videos. We did the last video, yes, yes, I'm dragging this job out for free videos. <sighs> Mad, I? But a lot of people have asked for, that's just rude. A lot of people have asked for us to do the testing and bits like that, it'd be helpful for apprentices and things. So what we're gonna do is, get the on-site guide up, run through it with you, the testing process to test the circuits. We've got a couple of radial circuits, ring circuit, um, that's it because lighting's radial as well, but a couple of lighting circuits and things like that. So I'll go and get the stuff out of the van. Oh, this video is also sponsored by Tradify, but as we go through the video, we're gonna get more and more into that because we are gonna be filling the test sheet out through their app. Nice. So yeah, I'm gonna get the stuff out of the van and you can run that thing. We've got the tools out and we're ready to go now. So the first thing we're gonna do is isolate the power, knock all the circuits off, and then we can begin our testing. First thing we're going to be doing is a ZE, so an external loop impedance on the mains tails. So what we want to be doing is disconnecting the main earth and then taking a reading from our live, neutral and earth. Let's get the tester. Right, so we'll get the earth disconnected in a minute, but I just want to show you the settings on the tester. So we've got the left side set onto LPE and the right side onto Z. That's on our tester, which is a Mega 1741 Plus. So we've got it set to that because we've got the bottom one is going to give us the ZE of the circuit and the top one is going to give us the PFC that we can be noted down on the cert. If we press this, it changes over to too high. We can leave it on too high for the ZE because there's no RCD in line so it's not going to trip. If we've got an RCD, like if we were taking a ZS off a circuit and it's protected at the board, we'd be using three, high, three low. That's just because it won't trip and it'll take the reading properly. If you've got it set on too high, it's just going to trip and you're not going to get any readings whatsoever. I hope this looks all right. It's not going to be as easy as I'd planned because I've got the test around my neck and obviously the camera in my hand. So main earth disconnected and it's in our crocodile cliff. We disconnect the main earth from the earth in terminals just so there's no external influences like our bonding. It can read an earth reading through the gas pipe, water pipe, things like that. Earth's on there. Then we've got our live and neutral here. So we're going to set it to too high yet and then put those on. And our tester has got auto test, so it's just going to begin testing now. And then it's given us a reading of whoops, 0.24 and a PFC of 0.9. So PFC is measured in Ka, so it's 0.9 that is. It's well under. We know that our max reading we can have off a TNS, this is a TNS, if I haven't said that already, is 0.8, so 0.24, we're well under, we can mark that down now, 0.24 for our ZE, 0.9 for our PFC. Now that we've got our ZE, we can now reconnect our main earth, that's because we need it for the remainder of the tests. So make sure that that's disconnected for the ZE, and that's it, that can go back in. We'll check the torque settings after on everything. We're going to be taking bits out and bits in, so I'm just going to do it with a normal screwdriver now and re-torque it all after. Right then, on to our circuit tests. I do do the ZE first. It's not in the on-site guide to do that first. You should do all the dead tests first, but I'll just do it. It's done. The earth's reconnected, everything nice. So first one we're going to do, if we look at the on-site guide, which so is going to put here, nice. The first test we're going to do is our continuity of protective conductors. We're going to be using test method one for this, which means we're going to be linking it out in the consumer unit. So what we're going to do is take the live from the circuit, the earth from the circuit, pop them in a 
Wago at the board. We're then going to run around the circuit testing at all points and our highest reading will be marked down as our R1, R2 for that circuit. So let's get these linked out now and then we'll run around with the tester. First circuit that we've got is our cooker. It's in a 10 mil. We didn't have a Wago big enough. I've just joined it with a connector. It's like going back in time. Joint it out with a connector block, so let's go to the cooker side. Our cooker's linked out and our switch is in there, if you can see it, or you can just about. For this test, we're gonna be setting it onto continuity, which is our picture of our ohms, which is orange on my tester, which is a low, a low resistance ohm meter. If I've got that wrong, don't shout at me. I don't use technical terms. It's a continuity test to continuity tester. First thing we're gonna do is use this to null our leads. That's so that the resistance of the lead is taken out when we're taking our test reading. So we're just reading the test of the circuit. So to do that, we're gonna just click that over there so that it links the um, terminal pins and then zero our leads so that it's showing zero. We've got it on auto null at the minute, so that's why it's beeping and it's testing through continuity. Get rid of that now. All we're testing through is our live and earth, remember? So all we've got plugged in is our live and earth. You can plug all three in, but we're not using the neutral anyway. <clears throat> now all we're gonna do is plug this into our socket. Ooh, switch the socket on. And we're getting a reading of 0 0.06. So for this circuit, 10 mil cooker circuit, it's 0 0.06 for our R1, R2 reading. Now that that's done, our next test for this circuit would be our insulation resistance. That's because in the list, we're skipping continuity of ring final circuits because we're not testing a ring final. So our next one would be insulation resistance. What we're gonna do for that is leave the earth disconnected, disconnect the neutral as well so that everything's free in the board. So we've got three, three cables in the board and then we're gonna test between each one using our tester. So for this test, we're gonna be setting our tester to 500 volts, and that's in the mega ohm range, which is in red on our tester. We don't have to touch this side because there's nothing red to match it up with, so it makes no odds which one it's on. What we're gonna do now is disconnect the link that we've put in, disconnect the neutral, and then show you what's next. Now that we've got the link out that we put, look how close I am. So I'm not sure you can see very well, but here's the ends of the circuit. Oh, you can. Here's the ends of the circuits. We're gonna be swapping our probe for a crocodile clip, and we're only using, again, the live and the earth in the tester. So no neutral plugged in still. And then what we're gonna do is crocodile clip onto the live, crocodile clip onto the earth, and then hold our test button. So this is applying the voltage now down through the connections, through the connections, through the cables, and that's giving us a reading of greater than nine nine. So that would go in our test sheet under the live to earth, and then we'll do neutral to earth. Again, greater than 999, and then we will do, and then we'll drop that. Then we'll do live to neutral just to finish it off. Which again, it's giving us greater than 99. When we are testing our insulation resistance, we need to make sure that any sensitive equipment is disconnected from the circuit. Dimmers, light bulbs, LED lamps, not bulbs, bulbs grow in the garden. Lamps, LEDs, um, what else we've got? Smokes, obviously RCDs. Also some USB sockets, you can't apply the 500 volt test down it. I know the BG ones that we use, you can, and it doesn't affect the reading. But if anything sensitive is on the um, circuit, it's just gonna affect your reading and it's not gonna look as good at all. You won't get anywhere near greater than 999. You can normally tell if something's um, connected still or it's reading through something because the tester that we use will drop the voltage. So when we're testing at 500, it'll be testing at like 50 and you're getting 0.00 on the reading. Unless it's a really bad cable, then you're in trouble. Now that the insulation resistance is done for that circuit, we can replace the connection. As you can see in this fuse board we're working on, we've got radial, 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 radial. So what I'm going to do is, that's the oven that we've just done. We're now going to do the hob, which is the same sort of circuit, so I won't show you that. Then we'll come back and we'll move on to a socket circuit. Now that our hob's been tested, we can get these connections back in. We've got R1, R2 of... R1, R2 of 0.13 on the hob. The hob's wired in six mil. So 
we get that back in and our insulation resistance we've got again greater than 999 on everything <clears throat> which is perfect we're going to leave the ring and move on to a socket circuit now so again live enough from the circuit in a way ago neutrals disconnected ready for our insulation resistance test let's run around all the sockets now and take a reading and see what the reading changes throughout the circuit So for that downstairs circuits, we've only got the sockets in here and one in the hallway. So for this, our readings, we've got 0.43 on the first and it makes its way around and the highest is 0.93. So as the circuit gets on, the cable length gets further, the resistance gets higher. So our R1R2, our R1R2 reading that we're going to be recording is from that socket on the wall, which is our end of the circuit, which was 0.93. So that's going to be our R1R2 for the downstairs sockets. We've tested our insulation resistance exactly the same way as we did the first one and all those readings are greater than 999. I'm going to get those reconnected now because that circuit's done for the dead tests and then I'm going to move on to the upstairs sockets. It's the same circuit, just a bit more points. So there's no point recording that because it's exactly the same sequence and it's only socket outlets on the circuit. So with those tests done on the upstairs sockets, we've got nine sockets on the circuit and our R1, R2 is 1.16. So that also shows us that from the downstairs to the upstairs sockets, the upstairs circuit cabling is considerably, well, not considerably longer really, but it is longer than the downstairs sockets. So downstairs we have 0.93, upstairs 1.16. We also had an insulation resistance reading of greater than 999. So we know we haven't caught a cable or damaged a cable or anything like that on that circuit. What it would show, if you had any shorts or anything like that, it would come up as 000, which would show you that either something's connected or you've got a damaged cable somewhere. The next circuit that we're going to be testing is our boiler circuit, which is fed from a B16 RCBO. <coughs> Again, we've got these linked out, but at the boiler end now, what I'm going to do is take the spur off, test at the spur and disconnect the load as well. That's just because when we're insulation resistance testing it, we don't want the boiler connected at all. So I'll drop that out of the load and get this tested. As you can see now, well, hopefully you can see it's quite dark in here. I've disconnected the boiler coming out of the spur. I don't think I needed to because it is a double pole spur, but I've done it just for the video. So we've got our um, tester set to continuity again. We've got our leads nulled. We're then gonna go onto the earth and between the earth and the live of the circuit because we've got those linked out in the board. And that's giving us a reading of 0.2 ohms. So 0 0.20 is gonna be our R1, R2 for the boiler circuit. I'm going to leave this disconnected while I do my insulation resistance test back downstairs. I won't show you that because it's the same as the other, it's just a radial. Leave that disconnected and then I'm going to leave the spur loose because we're going to be taking a ZS from this circuit. So it'll just save me taking it off again. So our last radial circuit from another B20 is this socket under here and our R1, R2 reading is 0.21. So now that all our radial power circuits are done, we're going to move on to our lighting. So we've got a downstairs lighting circuit and an upstairs lighting circuit and a smoke circuit. For these tests, what I like to do is take all the bulbs out first. So all your lamps out the circuit and any dimmers and things like that, disconnect and link through. And we're going to put all the switches in the on position. So same again on this circuit. We've took all the bulbs out. I didn't say why we'd done that, but that's for the insulation resistance test. I'll show you why in a second. And I've left all the switches on because we've wired to the switches. So, earth again. And live. And this light is giving us a reading of 0.27. What we're going to do now is go around all the lights and record our highest reading, which should be, again, our end of circuit. So downstairs lighting circuit, we've got nine points and our R1, R2 is 0.76. So that'll be recorded in the R1, R2 box, which I'll show you at the end. So now we're gonna do the insulation resistance. With the way that we've wired these, we've wired to the switches and then off to the light, three plate or two. I always get mixed up which one it's called. But because we've done that, if we leave our switches in the on position, that is then gonna test everything. So it's gonna test through every cable on the circuit. If there's any three cores, you probably would have to switch the switches, or if you're testing it where it's been wired to the center light, you'd have to switch them in the on position, off position, all things like that to test all the strappers and all the cables on the circuit. But we know how it's wired. We've got all our switches turned on. We've got all the lamps out, dim as if there is any, there's not here, but all that disconnected, and we're now gonna take a reading of the insulation resistance. So we've got our link took back out from the link that we put in for our R1, R2. We've got the neutral disconnected out the RCBO as well. 
we're going to set our tester to 500 volts again on the insulation resistance setting and we're going to be reading again between all of our conductors so live neutral and cpc so what's that neutral to earth we've got greater than 999 neutral to live we've got greater than 999 and our live to earth we've also got hopefully i'm saying it greater than 999 that can be recorded on our test sheet for our downstairs lighting so we've got our r1 r2 and our insulation resistance when we do the r1 r2 this also tests for polarity so because i've only got the live and the earth conductor plugged in on the tester when i'm testing it it's testing through those you could test between the neutral and earth also and go around and take a reading as well this would also definitely confirm polarity you probably are meant to do that but you know we pick up shortcuts and things like that as we go which is bad but we move so just while I'm putting these back in now, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the upstairs light. So testing for R1, R2 and testing our insulation resistance. And then we'll do the same thing for the smoke alarms. That way all of our tests, apart from our ring final circuit, has been done. Well, the dead tests have been done and we'll move on to the live tests. But I'm going to get these back in, test the upstairs lights, test the smoke alarm circuit, and then we'll move on to the ring. So if we pop back to our on-site guide here this time, thanks Zoe these we've got uh, before the supply is connected so a we're testing continuity of protective conductors we've done this b continuity of ring final we're going to be doing that in a moment c insulation resistance done d polarity with continuity method done e earth electrode resistance we haven't got an earth electrode here because it's tns like we saw earlier so we'll move on to our ring now this is a longer sequence of tests so i'm going to go through it with you with the on-site guide just to show you what to do so step one of our dead tests for a ring final circuit. We did already do this on the last video, if you remember, but I'll do it again for the purpose of this one. We're going to be taking end-to-end -end values of our circuit. So they're recorded as R1, RN, and R2 on the test result for that circuit. All the other circuits, if it's a radial, we normally fill those boxes with an NA because every box is meant to be filled on a test result sheet. So this is what we've got to do for this. So here is our ring final circuit. We've disconnected our lives, we've disconnected our earths, and our neutrals, sorry, and our earths are just there, so we'll get those disconnected in a moment. Then what we're gonna do is set our tester to continuity and just test between each conductor. So live to live, we're gonna do a test. So our one clip on there, our other clip on there, test continuity between. We're then gonna repeat it on the neutrals and the earths and record the reading. So again, tester set to continuity. Make sure that the leads are normal. So we go over to continuity. I've just turned the tester off, nice. Go over to continuity. Leads together. 0.09. We're then going to null those. 0, 0.00. So you can see the resistance of the test leads has been taken out. We're then going to take readings between the conductors. So our live loop and our neutral loop, we'd expect those to be roughly the same value. They should be exactly the same, to be fair. Um, that's because they're both 2.5 mil and they're both exactly the same length because it's in the same cable. So our live loop, we've got 0.28. Neutral loop, we've got 0.28. And our earth loop should be around 1.67 times higher and that's to allow for the fact that our live and neutral is 2.5, our earth's going to be 1.5 for that circuit. So 0 0.28 times 1.67, we're expecting around 0 0.46, 0 0.47, something like that. So we'll test onto those now, onto the earths, and then if we look, we've got a reading of 0.45, which is perfect and roughly, well, I say roughly, near enough exactly what we expected. So these are then going to be recorded in our test box, R1, RN, R2. So our next step in the test sequence is step two, which is here. I'm going to put it in this corner this time. It's moving about, isn't it? Two. Next method is to link out the live and the neutrals. So our live coming in to our neutral going out. So two different legs. We're going to link the live and the neutral and the live and the neutral. So you've got your one leg there, your one leg there, live and neutral, live and neutral, like that. 
I'll show you in the board, but you can't really see because you can't see the ends of the cables. Then we're going to go around and take a continuity test at all the sockets. This reading should be near enough exact. I think it can fluctuate between 0 0.05, but it should be exactly the same because, again, both our, so both our cables, our live and our neutral, are both 2.5 mil. Now that our cables have been linked, we're going to run around and take a reading. This reading doesn't get recorded. We just take it for polarity reasons. So now that that's done and we've took our reading down and just remember the reading, we don't need to write it down again. We're going to be linking out now the live and the earth. Again, we're going to cross connection them. So our one leg to our other, live to earth, live to it. Make a little heart look. So, I love you. Anyway, yeah, link them out like that and then we'll take a reading at each socket out there. As we move around the ring, we'll notice that the readings get a bit different. So the beginning of the circuit is going to be lower. As we get towards the center, we're going to get our maximum reading unless there's a spur off the circuit, then that'll be the reading. But basically that's because the live being 2.5, earth being 1.5, we're going to be getting different readings as the cable gets longer and shorter. So as we move up the circuit, it's going to get bigger. And as we move down the return, it's going to return to being lower as it gets closer back to the board. Now that we've got our um, live and earths connected in the board opposites, we're now going to take a continuity reading. So continu I'm hooked. Continuity on the orange again, and we're going to be testing at all outlets. So we've got 0 0.63, 0.24, 0.21 so that would probably indicate that this socket was wired first then to there then I think it drops down under here for the fridge so we've got 0.21 again then it would go up to the spur behind the extractor which we can get to in a moment and then probably over to here and then back again so that probably makes this the center of the circuit and our highest reading. So this will be recorded as our R1, R2 on the test sheet. So from experience and from the other results that we got, this beam 0.63 was obviously way higher than all the others. So what we're gonna do is retest this and just make sure that we're plugged in nice and securely and test at both points. So push it in nice and tight. So yeah, we've got 0.3 now. And then on the other one, we've got Point 0.3 as well. Perfect. That's going to be recorded as our R1, R2, and then we move on to insulation resistance. Now that our R1, R2 has been taken, it's time for insulation resistance. Again, all we're going to be doing is testing between live to neutral, neutral to earth, live to earth, and then recording our readings on the test result. When we do these circuits, we need to ensure that they're disconnected. I know I said earlier, but USB sockets that can't be 500 volt tested, indicator lamps if there's a spur with a neon in, all things like that will fluctuate the readings, so make sure that they're disconnected or off if you can and still test it safely. But yeah, make sure that they're all off, make sure they're all disconnected, and then we'll record our readings for that circuit. So now that all our dead testing is complete, we're now gonna torque up the, set, the connections back up to their torque settings. So we've got the instructions here. If you haven't, just do a Google, or they are sometimes written in the board, on the board, on the side of the MCBs, RCBOs, things like that. So we know that for our earth and neutral bar, we've got to be talking those back up to two. We've only had the earths out. We know that the neutrals are still talked from the previous video. So we'll talk those up to two and our RCBOs are going to be talked to 1.2. So we'll get all that talk back up and then get some power on. So torque setting at 1.2. We're then gonna just torque all of our connections that we've messed with back up to the recommended torque setting. Now with all our dead tests done, we know it's safe to energize. So what we're gonna do is turn our circuits on one by one and uh, whichever circuit we're testing, we're gonna have that one on at a time. So everything else off, just that circuit. You can turn them all on if you know everything where it goes, but we like to just leave one at a time on so that if there's any sockets, say so this socket here in the hallway is back to back to the kitchen. Could have been wired from the kitchen at one point. We know it's not because it's our job, but it can be. So just test one circuit at a time. That way it makes it easier to find the points and things. So first of all is our cooker, then our hob, kitchen ring, 
We've then got downstairs sockets, upstairs sockets, boiler, socket underneath here, down lights, up lights, and smoke alarms. All we're gonna be doing for this test, this tester makes it a lot easier because it has the Max Z setting. So all we're gonna do is get our plug in. If we've got sockets, get our probes, if not, and we're gonna be setting this to LPE. And then we're gonna be setting this to Max Z. So for this setting, obviously, as I said, we're gonna be setting it to Max Z. That's because on this tester, you can run around each, I've just done a test look, and as you can see, it's put a reading of 0.20. It looks like five when I look in the screen. 0 0.20, and our max Z then comes up with 0 0.20. So we've already, get the, we've already got the points counted. So all we can do now is run around, plug in them in, and our highest reading is gonna be recorded there, where it says max Z. This reading is gonna be recorded in that circuit box as the ZS of the circuit. So as I said, just, we're gonna run around now, taking the readings. Again, we have got this set to three low, that's because we've got an RCBO and it will trip on too high. So our reading there is 0.33, that's been recorded in the Z max at the top because it's the highest so far. So we're gonna run around now and take all our readings. As you can see here, now our max ZS for this circuit, well our max reading is 0.35. So that's gonna be recorded now in the ZS box in that circuit. We'll bounce around and do all the circuits now, and then we'll come back. Our next test, I think, would be the RCBOs. So our next process in the way of test results is to test the RCBOs. So what we're gonna do is just turn them all on. This is how I do it. You could do it circuit by circuit, but it's just to test them. And then we'll check that the test button is working. So as you can see, all those test buttons are working fine. We can then move on to taking our trip times. So for the benefit of the video, I'm gonna be testing the socket that's under here to show you what we're doing. So we're setting this to, not to ramp, auto test, and then we're setting it to 30 milliamps. That's because we're testing 30 milliamp RCBOs. So then with this being on auto, we can plug the tester in. We can then begin the test. So there we go, there's our first trip. Then we can reset it and it's gonna keep doing it automatically so you don't have to be at the tester. It's gonna trip four times and then we can reset it and we've got our readings here. So as we can see here, at half of the stated value, so at 15, it's stripping at greater than 1,999 milliseconds. That's because it's not tripping for that. Then at each point, so we've got at one times, it's tripping at 28.5 on zero, degree, zero degrees. 180 degrees, it's tripping at 19.2. Then we've got times five, 28.4 at zero degrees, and 18.3 at 180 degrees. So for each one on our test sheet, I know I think they've got rid of times one now and it's only times five, but we're gonna be recording. So times one, our highest is 28.5, times five, our highest was 28.4. So they're gonna be recorded in the circuit box. Now that we've got our reading for that circuit, I'm gonna run around the house now and take a reading for each circuit, make sure that the RCD is tripping within its stated values. Now that that's done, our testing is complete. The tester can go back in the van. I'm just gonna run around now, finish off putting the rest of the bulbs back in. All our sensitive equipment should be reconnected because we've done the live tests. So yeah. So this bit now is where our video sponsor comes into play for today. We're gonna to be creating our certificate on the Tradeify app. So all we've done is created a job for the day with our customer details in and things like that. We then come over to forms once we're in the job page and then create form. As you can see, there's all these different forms and we're gonna be using electrical installation certificate. So once that's loaded up, we've got contractor details, installation and client address, installation details, designer, construction, inspection and testing, next inspection, oops. And then we've got particulars of signatures to the electrical installation certificate, supply characteristics and earthing arrangements, particulars of installation referred to, in the, referred to in the certificate, schedule of inspections, comments on existing installation, schedules, schedule of test results and circuit details for distribution board, schedule of test results and detail board two, board three, board four, and then tested by is where we're gonna sign at the end. So if we go into, where am I going? 
test results and circuit details. So DB reference, location, supplied from ZDB and IPF. Then polarity confirmed, phase sequence we haven't got because it's single phase. SPD we haven't got, there's not one installed. Uh, distribution board OCPD, so the BSN number of the main switch, the type and the rating. SPD details we haven't got one. Details of test result, test instruments used, so this is where our serial number would go and then we'll move into the test results. So now that we are, we come to the bottom of that page and then schedule of test results and circuit details. So we're going to press that, we're then going to add circuit. So circuit number, circuit number one, done. Circuit description is the cooker. So I'm just going to whiz through this one and just show you what we need to see. Sorry, I'll just press next. So BSEN, we've got a 61009, type B, 32 amp, 6 Ka, max permitted ZS on 32 is 1.06 off the top of my head, I will check. Type of wiring A, number of points served, however many is on the circuit. Reference method would be 101. Lives, we've got, if we do it off the cooker, 10 mil. CPC is 4 mil. We've then got RCD details, which is again 61009 type B, 32 amp, 30 milliamp. So here, we've got ring final circuit continuity. So this was our R1. If you remember, we took the readings between the live and the live. That would be inserted there. RN, which was our neutral to neutral, there. R2, which was our earth to earth loop, which was there. R1, R2, which was our test when we'd linked the live and the earth and took readings at all the points. Highest value goes in there for the circuit. R2 continuity, I normally NA that box because we haven't done it. That would be, normally our R2, the only long leads that I do is to test continuity on metal light fittings or to check the bonding and take a result there. Insulation resistant test voltage, we're going to apply that at 500 volts, don't know why I've clicked that. And then live to live, we had greater than 999, live to earth, greater than 999. Polarity has been confirmed through the tests that we've done. ZS was our maximum reading on that circuit. RCD disconnection time in milliseconds. So again, I said the R times one's gone now and it's times five. So our maximum for our times five would be in there. We've then got RCD test button. We've tested that. Yep, we can tick that. AFDD, we haven't got an AFDD on the circuit. So each circuit is going to have that long list of inspections and they're going to go into making up the total test certificate that's going to be sent to the customer and registered with building control. So again, that is just another excellent thing with Tradify. Everything can be linked through. So we've got our customer details, which is going to be to book the job in. That's booked in. We've sent our quote off. Our quote's been accepted through the app. We then book it in through the app, which would create the job for today. Then once we're at the job today, we can set timers and things like that if needed. This isn't needed on here, but you can. You can then go into forms, create different forms for different jobs. So it can all be linked together and sent to the customer in one big foul swoop. Obviously the notification, you're gonna to have to notify it through your um, registering body. With us, it's Napit. So what we'll do is log into the Napit app, enter the details of the installation, what we've done here, who's done it, if you've got multiple people working in your firm, and then that gets registered through building control and sent to them via a email. So if you haven't tried Tradify already, I am gonna leave a link in the description below for a free 14 day trial. It honestly is worth checking it out because there's no registration needed. You can just go on there and have a 14 day trial. You don't have to put card details in. It's not automatically gonna start billing you, but it is awesome and it saves a lot of time in your business. It does for us anyway, it works perfectly for what we do. And we're just one person, well two. Scott doesn't count though. No. Not here is he? He's off again. But yeah, if you've got multiple people, you can track them through the app also. It really is excellent. If you do like it, after you've checked out the 14-day trial, remember to use code JLC50 for 50% off your first three months. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I hope you've enjoyed the video. A lot of people have asked if there is bits that we've missed that you want to know or if we've made any mistakes, we are only human. Hopefully it's helped some of you. Some apprentices, even if you're... Um, fully qualified and you're just watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you don't know what you're looking at or you're not interested in electrics at all you've clicked on the wrong channel on your way out make sure you do hit the subscribe button though and leave a little like and a comment big up tradify for sponsoring the video thank you all for watching big up to my members who continually support the channel if you do want to support us further click the link to join the membership in the description big up yourselves and i'll see you next time ta -ra. Yeah.